How's it going, guys? We have a past little question for endocrine step one intro medicine to CK year old girl. She's brought to the GP by her mom, 12 hour history of deep breathing lethargy, one week history of drinking a lot of water. She has no past medical history. Her mother is Hashimoto thyroiditis. Question wants to know which the like we see in patient. So it's a past little diagnosis of DK, diabetic ketoacidosis, the drinking a lot, peeing a lot. So polyuria, polydipsia, it's what we classically see. So Mother having Hashimoto thyroiditis, autoimmune diseases go together. You don't have to worry about strict HLAs as far as the relationship of DR3 or anything like that. But just if the US family gives you any type of autoimmune disease in a patient, rheumatoid arthritis, IBD, SLE, it doesn't matter. They can just mention another autoimmune disease, e.g. the brother has vitiligo, and they're just trying to tell you we have an autoimmune disease here. So the reason we've got deep breathing is because in DKA, we have a metabolic acidosis. So let's let's hop through here. So anion gap 10, wrong fucking answer. So we're going to have a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, which is greater than 12. Okay. So it's part of mud piles, DKA, the mnemonic for high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So we're going to take our bicarbonate and our chloride. We take that number. And so we add them together. We take that number, we subtract it from sodium. That gives us our anion gap. So it should be 13 or greater. I say greater than 12, but 13 or greater, because occasionally a question I have it is 12 and it's normal. Okay. It's a long discussion. So we have a metabolic acidosis here, and then we have cusmol breathing, which is we're attempting to get rid of as much CO2 as possible to compensate because CO2 is acidic. So normal anion gap, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, hypernatremia, wrong fucking answer. We have hyponatremia sometimes in the setting of DKA because we have what's called dilutional hyponatremia. So high glucose in the blood, and that's going to keep water with it. it has a high oncotic pressure. So it'll keep water with it, and it dilutes out our serum sodium. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, hypokalemia. Wrong fucking answer. Okay, we have hyperkalemia in the setting of DKA. Now, this can be a bit confusing. Okay, I'll make this real clean and easy. Emia means in the blood. So we have high potassium in the blood, but we have low total body potassium. It's not the same thing. So we'd say low total body potassium despite hyperkalemia or hyperkalemia despite low total body potassium. So the reason our potassium is high in the blood, hyperkalemia, is because we don't have insulin. So insulin is required for pushing potassium into cells. We can't do that. In addition, we have something called cellular shift. Protons build up in the cell. So we're going to have more potassium move out of the cell to compensate balance charge. So we have hyperkalemia, and that increased potassium is going to make its way to the kidney, where the kidney, for all intents and purposes, thinks that potassium is too high in the blood. So it's doing what it's supposed to do to get rid of it. So we have caloresis duration of potassium. So we constantly lose that potassium that's headed toward the kidney, but it still remains high in the blood from cellular shift and we can't push it into cells. So we have low intracellular potassium, but high in the blood. So overall low total body potassium. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D increased GFR, correct answer. It's a bit of a difficult answer choice for some of you, but it's a past level question. It's on the end of means you got to know that high glucose in the blood passing through the glomerular basin membrane is going to pull water with it. And one of the initial changes we have with diabetes is increased GFR. Holy shit. Okay. So it's called hyperfiltration. It's the first change that occurs in the kidney with diabetes. First histologic change is going to be thickening of the glomerular basin membrane due to non-enzymatic like oscillation, but hyper filtration, increased GFR is what we're going to see initially. And it sounds a little bit weird because diabetes is the most common cause of chronic renal failure. So eventually over time, the kidney will fail and we'll have a decrease in GFR, a diminution of GFR, but initially it's high. So let's just whip to the final one here. Reduction of beta hydroxybutyrate, wrong fucking answer. It's a ketone body. So we would have increased ketones in the setting of DKA, okay, because we're going to be gluconeogenic, ketogenic. So we're going to be trying to produce energy because we're not able to utilize glucose. So I'm not using this ketone body to be fancy here. I've seen this show up on USMLE in arrow questions, actually. Okay, so you'd select, for instance, up arrow, serum potassium, hyperkalemia, down arrow, total body potassium. You'd select up arrow, beta hydroxybutyrate. In this case, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content if you like my stuff. Subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.